Tony Suarez was preaching at a church in Arizona when he felt God telling him something that rocked his world. God told him that he didn't need revival chasers. Instead, he needed revival makers. Evangelist Tony Suarez has a heart for revival. He travels from church to church and around the world, hosting healing services and crusades. He says our world desperately needs to see the power of God demonstrated today, as it was in the book of Acts. In his book, Revival Makers, Tony shares how believers must take action and practice their faith in boldness so they can be the move of God that their family, city, and region are longing for. Well, Tony Suarez joins us now in studio, and we welcome you to the program. I'm so excited and honored to be here. Well, what a subject. Revival Makers is the title of your book, and people have been praying for and talking about revival for years and years and years, praying, hoping, especially for the hour we live in. But, Tony, you, your history um, as a, a spiritually goes back generations. I mean, you're a third-generation Pentecostal, but talk a little bit, if you will, about your grandfather. He had an experience in Colombia that really set the tone for your whole family. Absolutely. A missionary had come through and had given him a New Testament. He was actually shopping for bread, and the missionary said, this is the bread of life. Wow. And he began reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He never saw the missionary again. And he got to the book of Acts. Now, my grandfather had 12 children at home. Wow. So he had, a, he had an instant congregation. And they got to the book of Acts. And they read about the promise of the Father. But they didn't understand it. Just like in, just in, the, sure. like in the first century. And he said, let's do what they did. And maybe we'll get what they got. So they went out to, to, uh, to a hill. And they fasted and they prayed believing and asking for the promise of the father my uncle who was eight years old at the time saw an angel and the angel said go to this particular city it's called bucaramanga if you say it three times in a row it sounds like you're speaking in tongues you know <laughs> but he said go to bucaramanga this street this street number my servant is waiting so they made that journey and when they got there there was a missionary from england waiting at the door. He said, God told me you were coming. And he preached the gospel to my family. They were all baptized in the Holy Spirit, all water baptized in the river. And uh, so when, when the gospel came to my family, it didn't come through a, a preacher or a, or a book. It came directly from heaven. This is all we've ever known is to, is to follow after the leading of the Spirit. You've had such wisdom growing up because of that. I mean, for one thing, for your grandfather to even listen to an eight-year-old and follow that instruction yeah. was amazing. But your mom's had a tremendous impact on your life, especially your prayer life. She's really, she spoke to you in the fourth grade and gave you wisdom that's held strong to today. Yes, and actually, you know, yesterday was my mother's birthday, and I, I love that woman. My father was the man of faith. He'd say, you're going to preach. I'd say, how do you preach? He'd say, in the name of Jesus. You pray. <laughs> how do you pray? In the name of Jesus. My mother was the one that taught us the language of prayer, taught us how to prepare sermons, how to really live the life. The details. The stuff. details. Yeah. And she did it through example. And then just by, in a way, motherly mentoring, if you will. And I remember in the fourth grade, I was assigned to a teacher that nobody wanted. It was the <laughs> 80s. They were a little more difficult back in those days. And I, I remember I came home crying, Mom, I can't believe so-and-so is my teacher. She said, we're going to pray about it. And I thought she meant Pentecostal, yeah. let's rebuke the Stand devil. Against. Yeah, but he's un <laughs> she's under our feet. She said, no, 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 not like that. She <laughs> smiled and she said, Lord, I thank you for Miss So-and-So. I thank you. This is going to be the greatest year of Tony's life. And I jokingly tell her, you were Joel Osteen before there was a Joel Osteen. She's just <laughs> smiling and this is my Bible. This is, this is the greatest year of my son's life. Well, it ended up being the greatest year of my life. That wow. teacher became a family friend. She would come to our piano recitals through high school. Through high school. And I would remember that today at 42 because it was one of those early examples that, that trained me, taught me that when you pray, God turns situations around. God could take an example in the fourth grade. That's why it's so important for every parent today. Even those small details of life, turn it into a lesson and show your children that when you pray about it, not when you complain, not when you cry, not when you get angry, not when you post about it on social media, yes. but when you pray about it, that's what the Father hears and that's what the Father answers. So here you are with this rich spiritual background and just in 2021, God spoke something unique to you. You went to a church, you didn't even know the church. Mm -hmm. you, you really, on a whim, said, yes, I'll come and speak. Yeah. And, and the spirit fell. And what did God say? 
he said to me in the sermon, he said, I don't need revival chasers. I need revival makers. And what stood out to me is that, as, as you mentioned earlier, we've all been pursuing the last great move of God. Yes. We've heard that it's coming. I remember even as a young person in youth camp and then later leading services or preaching, there would always be an elder that would get up and say, you haven't seen anything yet. Yes. There's something <laughs> greater coming. And revival is always pushed yeah. to the future. But the Lord said, there isn't another great move of my spirit coming. This is it. This is what Joel was prophesying about. Wow. This is what our grandparents said was coming and our parents was, were, were building for. And when others see the great demise, if you will, of, of uh, spirituality in the world, the Lord's speaking to me. This isn't the demise. This is the former and the latter reign together. This is what we've been waiting for. It's the last great wave of revival before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So how do we carry revival? With, how, do, how do we receive from him what we're longing for? And then how do we carry it into the world? It starts, in my opinion, it starts with that baptism of the Holy Spirit that I believe is available to every believer. It's it, This is not a, a denominational type of thing. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we become Mark 16 believers. These signs follow them that believe. I don't chase the signs. The signs follow me. There ought to be evidence. The evidence is the laying on, uh, laying hands on the sick. It's rebuking of demonic and evil spirits. It's praying in that powerful name of Jesus and seeing the kingdom of heaven on the earth. So I believe that recipe involves prayer. It involves sanctification and holiness, righteousness, words that maybe aren't very popular today on the earth, but they're very popular in heaven. And then that empowerment of the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit guide us to establish that kingdom on the earth. Not looking for the next city to run to where, where something spiritual is happening. It's happening in us. It's, yes. our, it's our inheritance. Amen. Really, Absolutely. From the Lord. Tony's new book is called Revival Makers, and it's available nationwide. A book we should all be reading because the call is for all of us. Thank you. Thank Wonderful you so to much. have you with us today. Thank you. The Lord bless you.